Oh my goodness, you guys, this is a video that I have been so excited to make for a long time now. If you are a fan of The Alone Show on history, then you are probably hearing a little bit of a buzz about a whole new Alone season coming your way, Alone Frozen. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about what makes Alone Frozen different from a normal season of Alone, why I decided to do it, how it's different going back into Alone the second time, and how it went out there. So Alone Frozen is another season that also happened in Labrador in the same general region as season nine, but it was with past participants on Alone. They took some of the strongest past participants, and I'm not just tooting my own horn here, this is what it says on the History Channel website, and they invited us for a second turn at Alone. So different than the redemption season that they did on season five, where often they took people who had to go home early for one reason or another, and then also combined those with people who had stayed a really long time out there and put them all out at a, as a chance to quote, redeem themselves, right? I loved that this one was not phrased as a redemption season because we didn't feel like we had anything to redeem, right? We all had wonderful experiences on our first round. This wasn't a redemption, it was a second opportunity. Also, it's six people rather than 10 people. And one of the things that I freaking love about this season, they put out an equal number of men and women for the first time in Alone history. They actually gave us an equal shot at it. Some of the basics are still the same. It is still people set out in the wilderness on their own, still with 10 gear items, but the parameters were really different. It wasn't a gruel it out until there's only one person standing kind of a challenge, which I really loved. The premise is that everybody could win. There's a set timeline, 50 days. It was a shorter timeline than the Arctic 100 day challenge, partly because it's a very extreme environment. Not that the Arctic wasn't extreme, but when we get into this season, we'll talk a little bit more about what makes it so extreme. Frozen launched significantly later in the season when we were way deeper into fall and nearly winter. A late launch makes it way more intense, right? Because you don't have that window of mild weather to prepare for a long-term stay in such an extreme environment. And it also took place in a different location. So same general region, but season nine took place inland on a big river. If you follow that river all the way out to the ocean and spread out along the coast, that is where the frozen location happened. So even though it's not that far distant by miles, dramatically different environment when you are out on the coast exposed to those winds straight off the Atlantic Ocean, such that when I'm watching season nine, the whole landscape looks dramatically different. But I am familiar with that landscape because we launched from the same base camp. So when you see that footage of the bonus specials where people are going home to the tents by the lodge there, I got to be in that same place. So I have a good understanding of the environment that season nine took place in, but it was really different where we are, which is really interesting to see. The fact that every single person could potentially stay until those 50 days and we could all win together and would therefore share the prize. It was a pretty exciting new premise. It's actually the same premise that we had on season seven, the 100 day challenge, but this being launched later and with past participants makes it really different. Also, of course, it's a totally different place. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and if you want to actually get to interact with me and ask me about my time on Frozen, that is one of the benefits that I offer my Patreon members. So consider joining my Patreon team as well. So let's talk about why I personally chose to do Alone Frozen. I've been asked so many times, hey, if they did another redemption season, would you do it? Would you go out on Alone again? And I've always said, oh my gosh, absolutely, 100%, I would jump at the opportunity. That said, I really didn't expect that opportunity to come again so soon. I thought maybe season 10, they'll start thinking about another returners season or somewhere down the line, but having it be only three years from when I did season six in the Arctic was definitely not something I was totally expecting or prepared for. Still, heck yeah, I'm gonna do it. Are you kidding me? So just in general, the idea of another experience like that was really appealing. My time on season six was so beautiful. I've always wanted to go back out for sure. 
But in this case, being specifically in these conditions in Labrador was even more exciting for me for a variety of reasons. One, I freaking loved that it was equal men and women. That felt really awesome to me. It's always been a little bit of a bitter point that people are like, oh, a woman's never won alone when there's so fewer women that have had the opportunity, right? So just by the numbers, it, it doesn't pan out as well for us women. So being given equal opportunity felt really, really awesome. Also, I loved the idea that rather than it feeling like a competition, like I have to outlast everybody, I have to be better than the other people, it got to be a shared experience. There was so much camaraderie. I loved the preseason launch where we all were supporting one another. I think a lot of seasons people are supportive, but this was different because we knew we could all do it together. And I loved that idea. Another thing is that while I loved my time on season six, I mean, let's be honest, it is really physically intense, particularly if you've gone a really long time out there and put your body through serious physical rigors. In my case, right to the very edge of not doing long-term damage out there. So I'm not gonna say that it wasn't sobering to think about going out again. And that is why the idea that there was a time limit was so much more appealing to me. Not hatch, there's a white-breasted nuthatch on a tree right near here. Hopefully it'll fly through the screen. So having a specific time limit was really appealing to me because I knew that there was only so much damage I could do to my body in that time. The Labrador challenge was really exciting to me because I was already inland in the deep north in the Northwest Territories in season six and being on the coast was a whole different thing. So it was a really exciting challenge knowing that it would be a whole different place and environment and set of survival challenges for me to be facing. Also, my ancestry goes back to long, long ago in Quebec. My ancestors came over from France to the Gaspé Peninsula in Quebec, which is the very northernmost part of Quebec, and it's right across the water from Labrador. So while I had a really deep experience in terms of connecting to my ancestors and the way they lived on season six, Labrador was literally really, really close to where my ancestry comes from. And I found that really exciting and magical. Also, I mean, come on, right? To be selected as one of the strongest participants from alone and be able to go out with the other people who are the strongest makes it a really different season, right? That's a much more substantial challenge than going out with people who have never had this experience and never tested themselves before. Everybody I was going out with were amazing, super skilled, super tenacious people, all of whom I really liked and respected. So that was a really, really awesome thing that also added to that camaraderie of, heck yeah, we've got this we can all do this so let's talk a bit about some of the differences between going out for your first time and going out for a second time regardless of the parameters being different just how does it feel inside and in the body and in your decision making to have a second shot at a loan honestly it is tremendously different right it is so different when you already have some experience to draw upon. And there are ways where that's helpful and there's ways where it's hard, right? There's something about it being your first time where you're naive about it, right? Particularly, you don't understand the long-term consequences to your body when you go out the first time. You just think, I'm doing okay, this is no problem, I can keep doing this a little longer without realizing, yeah, I can, but it might take me the next year plus, in my case, a good year and a half to two years to actually recover from this experience. Physically, psychologically, emotionally, it's a big deal. So the second time around, you know that, you get it fully. And it's interesting that there was a big spread of people. There was Greg Ovens who was out on season three, myself from season six, three people from season seven, and Michelle, who was from the most recent season. So Greg, years out, fully recovered. Myself, three years out, just recovered and loving being fully recovered, having about a year to be like, yeah, feeling great in my body again. The season seven people, maybe just starting to get to that point. And Michelle, having just gone out the prior year, really not very long to recover from such an intense experience. So that was definitely a big one, right? having gone through it before and having a deep body memory of what it means, what it does to you. Of course, 
huge advantages to having been out there before. It's not new, it's not surprising. You know what to expect. That said, I think similar to childbirth, right, where you forget some of the really hard parts and just remember all of the love and glory and all of the amazing parts, that definitely is true of alone too, where you're like, yeah, this is gonna be awesome. And then you get out there and you're like, oh, right, this thing again, this thing again, good God, how could I have forgotten this part of being out? So good and bad about having that experience going back out. Of course, there were all kinds of really great things about having more experience. I had never snared anything in my life before season six. No one had ever snared successfully on a loan, so I hadn't put a lot of energy towards it. This time I had all of that experience, plus a lot more studying and learning about trapping and snaring. That also leads into gear choices. I feel I made better gear choices this time around than the first time because I knew what worked and what didn't. As you'll see reading the gear list when those come out, this time I brought snare wire and an ax, two things that I was really handicapped by not having on season six. Having learned how to snare, teaching myself in the field without snare wire, you better believe I was gonna bring it anytime I went on any kind of survival trip, especially alone this time around. And then of course the ax, I didn't need it for the vast majority of my time on season six, but when we got to freeze up and the lake froze over and I couldn't get through that ice because I didn't have an ax, that was major. I mean, being able to bring in fish from the lake would have made a tremendous difference. It would have meant a lot longer I could have been out there. So this time, heck yeah, I brought that ax and the ax and the snare wire, totally different things that I hadn't had the first time around. Also for me, it was really, really different psychologically to have a specific goal. There were things that were great about that. There were things that I didn't like as much about that, but huge difference from my first time out. This is gonna have been less true, of course, for Callie and Mark and Amos, all of who were on season seven, where they did have a set time limit, 100 days. 100 days is really long though, and longer than anyone had ever gone on alone. So in that way, I would say it was kind of different. The 100 day challenge set limit was really different because no one had ever gone to 100 days before. Whereas on our season, a lot of us out there had gone 50 days or something substantial or close to 50 days, right? So very different to be like, hey, I have done this. So I feel confident I can do this versus I could be out here until sometime next spring. I don't know. It all depends on how the other folks are doing. Psychologically, specific goals, really different. It's, it was a big part of why I was excited about this season. And I'll be talking as the season goes about some of the things that actually were a little bit hard about that. And then finally, how did it go out there? Oh my gosh, you guys, that was totally a trick question. Come on, you know I'm not allowed to talk about it. It hasn't even come out yet. <laughs> you might be wondering, hey, you've been doing these season nine reviews. Are we gonna be hearing more about Alone Frozen? Yes, of course. I'm going to be doing both reviews and talking about my backstory and some of the things that were going on that you weren't seeing on camera during my time out on Alone Frozen. So there's gonna be a lot of Frozen content coming out between reviews and my backstory, and then also, of course, talking about my gear and clothing and all of that kind of thing. So very excited to share more about Alone Frozen. Thanks so much, you guys. I cannot wait for you to see Alone Frozen and to get to share my next alone adventure with the world.